Hi guys, my name is Nick, and I am going to review the most recent Blade album. Just dropped, uh, what was it? It wasn't last night, because it is past 2 a.m. right now, so it was actually the 27th. And, um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm recording this podcast for, because I used to have a music review podcast, but I basically stopped doing it, um... So this isn't really part of that. I just wanted to go ahead and get out my feelings on the new Blade album. I was very excited when I found out that it dropped, and I just couldn't stop myself from talking about it. I just wanted more to do with it, you know what I mean? Um, I was actually, when it came out, I was sort of in a phase where I was listening to hardcore punk and things like crust punk and UK82 and, you know, researching that. So it was a bit of shock switching genres so quickly, but I had no choice, honestly. I had to listen to it immediately. I just did. So what did I think? You know, not that anyone specifically cares about my opinion, but I've been getting really into this album in the last 24 hours, and I really just wanted to share my thoughts and opinions. Um, If you just want to do more, you want to have more to do with this album, you want to hear what other people have to say, you know, I like to do that a lot. I like to read reviews while I'm listening to the album. Uh, I use the website Rate Your Music, of course. Um, Someone who gets on here and decides to read out a review for YouTube uh, for no other reason than just for the heck of it probably has a Rate Your Music account. Um, If you don't, you should definitely get one. (laughs) sponsor me right you music just sponsor me um so first of all just to get this out of the way i really really like this album the moment i listened to it i knew that i would like this album i didn't really latch on to anything and a lot of times on my first listen of a blade album you know i've just been like getting the vibe but my next few listens the melodies and things like that were revealed to me and i really do think that this is a great album Uh, The way that I see his discography is that it's split into several sections. There's, you know, his earlier stuff, which is a bit amateur, both more experimental and more traditional or rooted in rap. And, you know, at the same time, basically, Uh, his first official releases like Glue and Ever Since, where he established his sound when he was working with White Armor most of the time. Um, And then, I, you know, I think he got a bit more depressing on Ever Since and sort of continued on that vibe until Ice Dancer, while accepting, of course, um, the Working on Dying album. That one was definitely a bit different. Um, But, you know, still sort of with his depressing vibe that he had going on um, until Ice Dancer, where he came up with a more, like, in-your-face, cohesive, structured sound. And then starting with Exeter, we have his new vibe, in my opinion, which sort of transcends the cloud rap genre that he, you know, let's face it, pretty much invented along with Young Lane and adds other influences, uh, sort of has this warm, almost organic and yet synthetic vibe at the same time. So that's different for him specifically. Um, Also, starting with 333, he sort of distilled that sound into a much more accessible and catchy brand of music. I absolutely love, love, love that he is getting into more structured, catchy, melodic music. I mean, he was melodic before, but almost more... uh, atonal, if that makes sense. It definitely wasn't the catchy sort of pop-oriented melodies that he's experimenting with now. And, you know, all of this, all of this that I'm saying, um, it's definitely relative. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying that he's becoming Kesha or anything like that, but relative to his earlier output and to the music that sort of surrounds him and is tangential from Blade. Anyway, I love that he's getting more catchy and pop-oriented, and 333 was my favorite album of 2020, and I think it was a synthesis of Old Blade, the gorgeous white armor production, and his newfound pop tendencies. And then Good Luck was a fun experiment where he went even further into pop territory, and this is also where he started with the trance influence, which is carried over onto this album. If you don't like the poppy blade of 333 and good luck, you're definitely not going to like this album. This is the cohesive, structured, catchy music of 333 with the trance influence of good luck. All right, so now that I've sort of like set up my opinion on the album and its context within Blaze discography, I'm going to do a track by track review. I wrote down some notes. All right, so 
The first song is an intro song, so it's not really structured or anything. Uh, this song is produced by Lucy, who Blade worked with a lot on this album, and he is part of Rip Squad, which is why a lot of people are comparing this to Ice Dancer, since that album was produced by that group. Lucy worked with Lil Uzi Vert on the song Baby Sasuke from Baby Pluto. Was that? Yeah, okay. I, I like that album. Um, he's worked with Trippy Red and Smoke Perp, so already, you know, this album is going to be a bit more accessible than the stuff uh, Blade's done with White Armor and Young Sherman. I really like the Whatever tag. I'm not sure if that's Lucy's producer tag or not, but I think it really goes with the album. You know, I just like the whole thing surrounding it. You know, he really has that, like, sort of, uh, I think that that's a really, really interesting, you know, concept that he goes with. You know, like these keywords like whatever, loss and gain are the same, I'm nothing. Um, you know, he said some lyrics like, I'm just some air inside some air. I'm just a drop of water in the ocean. So all of that sort of ties together to me. And it doesn't quite seem depressing. It almost just seems like, um, like realism, like sort of like we need to really step back and look you know, and see that we are not the center of the universe, that we're just, you know, one drop of water in the ocean, like things are just whatever. It's not that big a deal. You know, you just need to take a step back. And I think that that's really um, maybe something at the core of Blade's uh, identity or not, but it's definitely a concept that he works with a lot in his work. Um Sort of went off on a tangent there. Anyway, this song is really vibey with sort of a wash of ethereal synths. And one thing, I just said ethereal. Okay, ethereal. That's, you know, I do need to work on that because I say ethereal all the time. And I believe it's pronounced ethereal. Anyway, uh, one thing that I noticed right off the bat is that this album has more, well, this song, you know, if we're going in order and saying that this is my first listen, uh, this song has more busy drill production, you know, and that sort of stays on most of the album. Um, it doesn't have the usual trap production that he's worked with for most of his career. You know, that White Armor and everyone come up with. It has drill beats, and that's really interesting. It's different. It's definitely more busy and packed, you know what I mean? It, it makes the songs less, uh, they have less space. So I do like this song, but it's just an intro, not exactly something I got too into, but it does set you up for the vibe of the entire album. So that is good. All right. The second song is Let's Ride. And I really like this song. This one is also produced by Lucy. Once again, there's a busy drill percussion and then the ethereal synths floating around it, as well as a line of deeper synths playing a specific melody and the usual trap bass grounding the song. I think this one has a really great melody and structure. I like the ad-libs, and I was kind of wondering if they were Echo 2K. Um, if not, they're definitely his style, and I do love to hear it. It could be Blade, you know. We've seen what he did on Girls Just Want to Have Fun, <laughs> uh, and I'm so here for it. Um, this is already more accessible and, I guess, mainstream than 333. You know, if you would use that word, like I said, um, relative. Uh, it sounds very much like today's Cloud Trap, but then again, that is a sound that Blade really pioneered. So, you know, he's just playing his own sound. The third song is Hotel Breakfast, and I absolutely love this song. I think this is one of the obvious standouts on the album that everyone's going to love. And I think it's, I believe it's the one that was leaked beforehand. I'm not exactly sure, so don't hold me to that. Uh, this one was produced by Lucy, along with Loso and Rock. I believe that's how you say his name. I think one of the notes he had on Genius was, the only one he had, was um, I'm the one that produced this song, and my name is spelled Rock, not R-O-K. Because, well, that's how it was spelled, but they, you know, put capitals with the periods in between. So I guess it's Rock. Loso seems to be even more mainstream of a producer than Lucy, when you look at who he's worked with. He's worked with Lil Uzi Vert, Future, Trippy Red, Ian Dior, Lil Tracy, The Holiday, and Uno the Activist. 
When you look at the specific songs he's done, the standout for me is Futsal Shuffle 2020 by Uzi, which I absolutely love because of his synth influence. And I really like that that sound is starting to catch on in the cloud rap scene. For instance, Uno the Actress has done stuff like that with, um, with Das Him, I think. Yeah, I sound, you know, I'm white. I can't say shit like that. Um, I'm white and I'm not going to pretend like I can say any of this crap. But yeah, Das Him. That's what, that's him. You know, that's one of my favorite songs by him. Love, love, love the production. It definitely reminded me a lot of Lil Uzi Vert, and now I know why. You know, it, that song sounded like he could jump on that production and just kill it. It's great. Future seems to be the odd one out on this list as more of an original melodic trap artist, but not one influenced by the hyper-futurism of cloud rap. So let me go ahead and look up what he did with him. It looks like it was just the song Because of You, which he did with Uzi on Baby Pluto, so that makes total sense. Not one that was on one of his other trap out Because, you know, he does have a very different song. But I like that he's trying to sort of, you know, I mean, he did that album with a little Uzi Vert. He's trying to become more current again because he really changed the rap game when he released his, um, I don't know if it was for his first album or second. But before him, trap was definitely, you know, I mean, it was already becoming big. It was probably bigger than the other types of rap music by the time that he released his stuff, but he changed the game so much by introducing melody to trap, because before that, trap was not a melodic genre, you know what I mean? And so he really changed the game. I make up, you know, I kind of make up genres in my head. This is not an official genre, but I call the style of trap that uh, Future made and the stuff that he released after that, um, you know, and the other artists that were influenced by him. Um, which is pretty much everyone at this point. I call that melodic trap. Um, and it's really changed at this point because of the influence of cloud rap, so it's very different. And so that's what I mean when I say, you know, future is the odd one out, because his stuff was very much original melodic trap, not influenced by the cloud rap genre, which did not exist at that point, you know. Blade started making his music in, I believe, well, I don't know when he started, but he started putting out stuff in 2013, you know, that unofficial collaboration. So, and that's also when Young Lean released um, Unknown Death 2003. So that's sort of the very beginning of the cloud rap genre, um, which was probably very influenced by Future as well. Um, but, you know, Future, he, I think... His first album was released in 2011. Don't hold me to that. I'm not looking this up right now. So, <laughs> but I believe so. So, you know, he's been around for a long time. He changed the rap game so much. And Cloud Rap has really been growing. And in the past, you know, maybe like two years, I would say, it's blown up. Maybe three, you know. It's really become just the mainstream um, style of trap. And so I think it's kind of hard as an older rapper and one so rooted in an older style, which makes me feel so old to say, um, it might be hard for him to keep up with the current trends, you know what I mean? So him doing that album with, um, with Lil Uzi Vert, it was very interesting, and I liked that album. I did feel like it had a lot of filler and ended up getting kind of boring around the middle to the end, but... I love to see people try new things. I love to see them evolve their sound. And I think that that was a good album. And I do hope that Future keeps going. Uh, I'm sorry. I got so sidetracked. Sidetracked. Sorry. Um, this review is about The Fool by Blade, not about Future and his career. Alrighty. So one of the other songs that Loso did was a collaboration with Playboy Cardi and Trippy Red. And he's also produced for Duat Kane and Sababy. Rock, the third producer on the song, is another cloud rap producer that's worked with Lil Keed, Lil Uzi Vert, Future, and Lil Got It. He also produced the song Warrior, which was on Young Thug's most recent album, or rather YSL, Young Stoner Life, uh, as well as stuff with Gunna and Young Bands. 
back to the song. I really, really like this song. I think it is some great straight up rapping from Blade, and it really seems like he strengthened his real rapping skills rather than hiding it behind tons of auto tune like he usually does. Okay, I mean, don't get me wrong, there's definitely auto tune, and it sounds good. You know, this song is also very melodic. I love the lyrics, and they're very easy to hear, unlike a lot of his songs. This is just really good, and I feel like he's always getting better. I love the production. They sort of chilled on the drill percussion beats, you know, and then I love the synth melodies. There's two, they sort of interweave to create this very, once again, ethereal, warm, digital, spiritual vibe. I love the camera sounds too. This is just, it's a really feel good song. So the fourth song is called I Think, dot, dot, dot. Another great addictive melody. And we're back with the busy drill drums. I love Blade's repeating vocals in the background, and I love the bouncy sound of the synths. One line, anyway. There's also the main synth melody, which is once again very high-pitched, futuristic type of sound. But, you know, that really goes without saying we are talking about Blade Blade music, so it's all going to be futuristic, high-pitched. You know, this is a, it's a different producer. We don't have White Armor and Young Sherman, who are kind of the guys that really created that sound. It's crazy to think about how influential um, the producers of White Armor, Good, and Young Sherman have been on rap. You know, within the past 10 years, they've completely changed the rap scene. Back to the song. This song is sort of wistful, a bit sad, in contrast to Hotel Breakfast, which was more upbeat, warm. Uh, but it's really nice. The song was produced by Loso and Lucy, and we're adding another producer to the mix, Rip. Rip works with Lucy as part of the group Rip Squad, and he's actually from Australia. He's worked with Drang Gang extensively in the past, producing songs from the albums Ice Dancer, Ever Synth, Red Light, and Drang Gang's D&G collaboration, as well as Thai Boy Digital's legendary member album, and songs for artists like Uli K, Shinigami, and Young Bands. These are good producers. I'm really enjoying seeing that. The fifth song is called The Nine Is Up. That's with two E's. And this one is produced by Lucy. It's short and sweet. I love, love, love this song. The synths are super iconic to me. Very reminiscent of Futsal Shuffle 2020, which is funny since Loso is actually the one that produced that. And we've got Lucy on this song. But um, that sort of sound is very in vogue right now within the cloud trap melodic trap these days. You know, the second wave melodic trap, I like to call it that jokingly um, because of how different uh, melodic trap has gotten since Future's days. You know, I'm absolutely living for it. This is where he introduced some clips from a movie or something. I'm not exactly sure what that's from, but it shows up later in the album too. I love Blade's melodies on this song. He's become such a good singer at this point. I don't really think he needs auto-tune at all, but of course that's his thing. It adds to his computer world vibe, like he's an AI and a computer making these songs with information he's gained from listening to trap. Love it. That's really the image I get when I listen to his music, is an AI. This song also has some other icy synths to add more texture, along with those two gorgeous trance synths in the front. The lyrics on this song really speak to me as well. It's just a really great song, you know. It's now becoming another favorite of mine, although it didn't originally jump out to me as much as Hotel Breakfast and Trendy. I do hate how abruptly it ends, though. The sixth song is Desire with two E's. This one was also produced by Lucy. This one has sort of a sad, wistful vibe once again. Uh, it sees a return to his more heavily autotune style. It's very cloudy and indie. Very dreamy. I love it. Well, I like it anyway. It's a good song. The seventh song on The Fool is titled I Want It That Way. I was honestly really hoping that this would be a cover of a Backstreet Boys song, but unfortunately, it's not. This one sees Blade asking how many times he needs to learn the same lesson over and over before he can change his life, and I have to say that I relate hard. How old is Blade? Let me see. He's 27, same age as me, and he's definitely accomplished a lot more than me, so, you know, I feel him, though. A lot of people probably have that problem, regardless of how much they accomplished. Um, you know, it's crazy. He He's accomplished a lot. You know, 2013, when he started, how old was he? How, how long is that? Gosh, he was 19. That's crazy. 
He is so talented, honestly. Uh, this song, you know, I Want It That Way is all right. It's not my favorite from the album, but I like the section near the end where he breaks out into an Echo 2K voice. It's pretty great. I do appreciate, however, how this sort of breaks up the album because the songs were getting a little samey at this point. You know, and this sort of broke out of that vibe and gave us something new. So even if I wasn't a huge fan of the melody itself that he used on this song, I can still appreciate that. This is about halfway in the album, so that's a great time to do this. I mean, there's 13 songs, so either this or the sixth. But yeah, uh, that song was also produced by Lucy. Anyway, the eighth song, Baby, uh, spelled B-B-Y. I guess I should say B-B. I don't know. Baby. I'm going to say Baby. Baby is produced by Lucy as well as Loso and a producer named Out of Town. Out of Town is another cloud rap producer. He did Death Note for Nar, great song. He did some stuff for Lil Uzi Vert on Eternal Let's Hake. He did some of the songs on Whole Lot of Red by Playboy Cardi. That's really interesting because, you know, that album has a unique production. Um, he did Ski on the Young Stoner Life album, as well as Icy by Young Thug himself. He did All Bad by Future. That's super interesting. But, you know, that's on the album High Off Life, and that is very different from the modern futuristic Icy Trap we've been talking about. Death Note is actually kind of different as well, but not as much. So this guy seems a bit different from the other producers, as well as a lot more mainstream, honestly. He's done stuff for DaBaby, Gunna, Trippy Red, Juice World, Lil Got It, Wiz Khalifa, Nav, NLE Choppa, and Lil Keed. Yeah, it is honestly crazy to me that Blade is now working with artists like this. When, you know, he really came from the underground. He has truly worked hard to get where he is. He's almost at a million monthly listeners on Spotify, which is on it's it's so crazy to me. He's he's almost caught up to Young Lean on there, so you know, he's really blowing up. He's really getting the recognition he deserves, and I am so happy to see it. I know a lot of fans probably aren't because they want him to be their special little cult item, but I'm happy that he's blowing up as much as he is. He deserves the love and, you know, quite frankly, the money. He's worked so hard, and he's so creative and ingenious. Okay, enough fanboying ever, Blade. Uh, back to the song. This one seems to have the bass and the vocals up front, with the synths just in the background with the percussion. The lyrics are very high-pitched and dreamy most of the time, which is what he's singing about, dreaming. This song has somewhat of a different vibe to the rest of the album, and it almost just felt like filler to me, unfortunately. But I did like the production, you know? I mean, he had, he had a expensive name on there, you know what I mean? So I guess maybe I was expecting a little more. <clears throat> the ninth song is called Inspiration Comes. The melody on this one is super addictive, and I'm loving it. Very dreamy, and has the classic line, drain high school football tryouts. I'm going to remember that one. I need that one tattooed on me, or at least put it on a shirt. This is another that's really starting to stand out to me as one of the better songs from the album. You know, I love the relaxed, stoned vibe and the warm synthetic production. This one also features Ty Boy Digital, and he adds another layer to the song and to the album in general with the deeper pitch of his voice and his harder style. I'm really here for it. I feel like I'm at an alien rap concert on Venus. Inspiration is definitely coming to me, like the song says. Uh, that song was produced by Lucy as well. He really is an icon. He is a good producer, as I am seeing from this song. Uh, from this album, in general, from the album. Because he's, he's done uh, almost every song on here so far. Uh, the tenth song is called Ego Baby, and this one was produced by Lucy as well. Definitely an icon, definitely. Um, this has that little clip from the movie or whatever it is. I don't know. Is that a producer tag? I'm not really sure. Like, I'm, I don't think so. I love his little laughing at the beginning of the song. This is more classic Blade over those busier drill beats and a laid back synth line in the background. His voice is sampled in the background to create a very cool texture throughout. And I love, love his high pitched singing near the end. He's literally evolving to become Echo 2K at this point, I think. Unless I'm mistaken and that's not just Echo, but I do think it's him. It's, it's truly great. 
I'm really living to see him evolve. He just seems to keep getting better and better. He's a better songwriter, a better singer, a better rapper. You know, so his skills have just evolved, and he can sort of use them to bring his vision to life, you know, um, because I, I just feel like a lot of artists, or maybe all of them, sort of have this vision of what they want to create in their head, and sometimes it's hard to get it all down on paper or, you know, into a song and an aesthetic like he's doing. Um, so the more you develop your skills, the easier it is to truly create that image exactly the way you see it in your head. So I'm not sure if that's exactly how it's working for him, but I know for me that as I develop my skills, it gets easier for me to create that image in my head. And along the way, you sort of layer things. You're learning new skills. You're creating, you know, you get new ideas of what you can do with these skills. And it's just, it's so fun. Although I also like how when you don't know, like, the correct technical way to do something, you come up with your own way. And that's definitely what Blade did at the beginning. He was truly, he was truly an outsider artist, really. He didn't know maybe how to do all this stuff the way you're supposed to, and he sort of came up with his own way to rap, his own way to make music, and it was truly uniquely his. But as he's evolved his skills, it allows him to use that, you know, very original, true-to-himself um, sort of standing point. Like, that's his base that he has, and then the techniques and um, refinement that he's developed along the way have helped him to take that, you know, raw original material and sort of refine it and turn it into something that's both original and great, you know, and accessible. Um, it just wonderful. You know, I, I know that I keep fanboying. I sound like an obsessed freak, but, you know, I don't know who else would do that other, who else would, um, you know, make a little audio review the day after the album was released at 2 a.m., 2.38 a.m., um, other than someone who's obsessed with Blade, and I love Blade. I think he is an amazing artist. You know, I just got into him maybe like three or four years ago, but along that way I've just really gotten to know him his music his work um so intimately and he just really speaks to me he's one of my favorite artists now all right trendy the 11th song that one might be my favorite I just love the melody it's so catchy you know it's been stuck in my head all day since the album came out it is an amazing song it really is I love the synths and the texture and the melodies of the main and background synths Oh, I said synths twice. Anyway, uh, it has it has two uh, synth lines, and they're both great. The lyrics are fun. You know, they're sort of more silly and psychedelic than anything else, but they're really enjoyable. I've listened to this song over and over since the album came out, and I really like how it gets slightly more sparse in the middle and then goes back to the fully layered sound it was before. So this song has dynamics, melody, structure, and everything you could want. Also, Blade's double-tracking is on points that one was produced by loso and lucy you know i think i think with that song you just really see how far blade has come and how like i said he's taken that original unique base that original you know thing that really is unique to him and makes him the artist that he is and he's refined it and really made it into something that's both original and raw but also enjoyable and something that everyone can enjoy it'll get stuck in their head he's just you know he's really good it's almost like this is going to sound horrible and people aren't going to like it but it's like indie rap i mean all cloud rap kind of is so i don't know what i'm trying to say but it's just really great that's a great song and this album I'm really loving up to this point we don't know if I'm gonna love the whole thing we'll just have to see um because honestly um it does sort of fizzle out unfortunately so we're on the last the second to last song the penultimate song this one is called search true and it was produced by Lucy and a producer named Clibo Clibo is a Dutch producer and he's done stuff for Uzi Uno the activist Lil Tecca Polari Eric DOA 
not sure how to say his name, and a bunch of people that I have never heard of, to be honest. I actually don't think I've heard any of the specific songs he's worked on either um, with those artists. Uh, but these are all in the same vein of rap that the previous producers have worked on. That modern cloud trap sound. Second wave cloud trap, if you will. Not really. Not <laughs> um, Search True has a fast, upbeat synth chord in it, but the song itself is one of the more wistful, bladey songs. Blady? Blade-like? I don't know. Anyway, I do enjoy this song. Uh, I like the melody, but it does seem a bit more like filler, unfortunately, and I'm not obsessed with the production either. Uh, by this point, the album does start to feel quite a bit samey and homogenous. I don't want to say boring, because the album is not boring by any means, but I do wish that he had changed things up to be more engaging with the track list. Th this isn't a bad song by any means. It's just... I don't know, maybe it's just because it's coming after Trendy, which was such a great song. I don't know. It's a hard act to follow. So this last song, number 13, is called Wet Water 2. And this one is produced by Lucy, again. This is a very relaxed song, dreamy, ethereal. He uses the word ethereal in the song too, so he must be cognizant of what he's doing. Uh, once again, by this point in the album, I'm feeling a bit unengaged by how samey the songs have started to get. This is a good song. I like the production more than the last song, but I wish he had changed things up for the ending because it's just more of the same. And it makes me sad that the ending of such a good album just sort of fizzled out. I do like the wave sound at the end of the song, though. So that's The Fool. The Fool 2021 by Blade. Um, you know, I really enjoyed this album a lot. It felt a lot like 333, which is one of my favorite Blade albums. You know, I have to say, I honestly do like 333 better than this album, though. I really, I feel like the production on 333 was better than this album. But, you know, that kind of goes without saying. That was White Armor. White Armor is a god. White Armor, White Armor is possibly, uh, I'm not going to say definitely, but possibly the best um, rap producer and beat maker at this time you know what i mean um i do think that the production on the fool is really good it's definitely better than good luck not not to you know shade mecha talk he's a great producer but uh this one is better than good luck you know it's a very cohesive album but unfortunately it is not as well structured as good luck 333 or exeter uh, especially good luck and exeter because those were very well structured, you know, they really had a beginning, middle, and end. Um, three, three, three was fairly well structured. It was definitely better than the fool. But you know, that's really one of the fool's only downfalls is that structuring, and then um, the two songs at the end that really f kind of felt like filler. So I I see a clear trajectory to more accessible dance oriented blade. Dare I even say hyper pop? After all, he did work with Charlie XCX and Mecha Talk, as well as have Hannah Diamond photograph him. That was for a magazine, I believe. I'm not sure which one. You know, I really think he's going to keep going even more in the dance direction. Why not? Ty Boy did. You know, look at his Billy Bull album. Echo really shook things up with PXE. He went in the indie direction that Blade has hints of here and there, like at the beginning of 333. I know I'm going to get dragged for saying that, but I have to mention it. You know, honestly, I love how Drain Gang is evolving. They're really all coming into their own. Typeboy has really honed his skills, you know? His debut album showed him finally establishing his character and how he was a unique member of the Drain Gang Collective, you know, a legendary member. And the experimenting with hyperpop and releasing a full-on trance EP, similar to what Denny L. Harrell did with his most recent release. Echo really went left field with a post-industrial and indie pop album, really bringing his spiritual, angel-like aesthetic to a completely new realm. And Blade is getting more poppy, more dance-oriented, more accessible, and at the same time, even more dreamy and warm and organic. And I just love it. Compared to his other albums, I think this is on par with Ice Dancer and Trash Island. I think 333 and Glue and Exeter are better than this one. And I think that The Fool is better than Good Luck, as well as Red Light Ever Since and Working on Dying. So I know... 
I know people are going to be mad at me, but that's just how I feel about his discography. The Fool is a super great album, and I am so here for it. And I'm extremely excited to see what he does next and what the entire collective does next. Just knowing that in the past few years they've evolved so much makes me so excited to see what they do after this, you know? Um, maybe, I I think, like I said, a production for Blade is he's going to keep getting even more poppy and accessible, and I'm hoping more dance-oriented, like what we saw with the Mecha Talk album and the synths on this one. I hope he goes full-on hyper-pop, you know? I mean, we saw maybe, maybe a little hint of it, and girls just want to have fun. I really hope that Blade goes full on hyper pop and uses his unique, you know, vision to create like this warped Blade uh, style of hyper pop. I would would love that, and I hope that's what he does. And then, as far as Ty Boy Digital, I guess I kind of hope that he's gonna um, keep going with that hyper pop style that he's done because he's really embraced hyper pop. If you heard his DJ Billy Bull album incredibly good uh, a really full on um, bubblegum bass trance album you know 2000s trance and bubblegum b- bass just like Danny L. Harl in his last album love it and I hope he continues in that direction under Tie Boy Digital um, and really fuses it with his you know um, a specific brand of Drain Gang style rap and then as far as Echo I have no idea what he's going to do next, you know. He only released one album, and it was crazy. Because all the stuff that he had done before, you know, he'd done a lot of features. And it wasn't so angel-like. You know, it wasn't so, like, just, I don't know how to describe that album. It's such a good album, and it almost came out of the blue. Like, it was so left field. Um, And it was... even more ethereal than anything Blade has done. It was even more dreamy. It was just crazy. And then after that, his next release, uh, PXE, changed things up like that. Um, He just went in a completely new direction. Iconic. Iconic. He is really... I I know it might be um, heresy to say this, but Echo 2K is the most creative of them most creative of Drang Gang. And, you know, all of them are extremely creative, but he's the most, you know, he's the genius of the group. He's the real genius. Um, And I am so excited to see what he does next. I hope he releases a new album soon. And um, I guess I hope that he continues with the indie pop direction he was going, you know, like the acoustic guitar type thing, that melody that he had in there. It was so indie pop. Um... I hope he continues with that. You know, as far as the post-industrial, I didn't hear quite that much of it, really. I expected more. Um, I would love to see him embrace something like industrial, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to say power electronics, but you know what I mean. Coil. Um, not quite like that. But, you know, I would love to see him do that. But I, I, uh, out of things that I think are possible or likely, I would love the more... Um, acoustic type thing I would die for that I would love it I don't know if he's going to do it but I'd love it um, Blade is my favorite out of the Drang Gang Collective though he's my favorite even though I do think Echo 2K is slightly more of a genius um, you know at Type Boy Digital he always gets overlooked but he's a really good artist I love Legendary Member I think that was a really great solid cloud rap album I think it was great you know, I honestly like Drain Gang more than Young Lee. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. That is my opinion on The Fool. I hope some of you found this informative or just a good, you know, way to kill some time. Um, I might go ahead and review some of his other albums, maybe Young Lee. I don't know. Who knows? I enjoy reviewing albums. It's fun for me. All right. See you guys.